All right, guys, welcome to another episode. I'm going to be answering another question by a follower. Thank you for the questions, by the way. Keep them coming. Uh, I love the questions. They're awesome. Gives me an opportunity to give you more content. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask. If you want anything a little bit more detailed, you can do that too. Just give me, give me some of the details so that I can give you as much info from my experience as I can. Okay, so this question comes from Mona Tobias. She's a good friend too, really nice person. I know her personally. And uh, the question here is, it's a little bit of a paragraph, but it does have one fundamental question that I'm going to get to here in a second. Before I get to it, make sure you check out my book, The Decoy Book by William Garrido. Check out my other two books as well. I have... Uh, Dog myths, some myth about dogs debunked, and info every dog trainer should know. Just released the decoy book, and I have another book right now on its way out. I'm currently working with the editor, and we're going to be bringing it to fruition here in a little bit. So stay tuned to that one. It's going to be on Amazon. If you just search my name, William Garrido, G A R R I D O, you should see that fourth one here pretty soon, too. All right, now to the question. Question is, how do you address dog owners, so pet owners, when you see them uh, and you see there's going to be a problem? So I never give my opinion unless asked. This is still her question. Never give my opinion unless asked. In horse and dog matters, I saw a lady at PetSmart with her new puppy smacking it in the face, inciting it to bite. She told me she wanted a guard dog that would bite. By the grace of God, she was open to talk to me, and we sat in the parking lot for well over an hour, but I cringed to think the people think that this is the way to train and the innocent people that are going to be bit. So that's a very specific question to what she saw, but her question really is how do you how do you address people when you see them do something off something weird, something that you would consider cringeworthy. There are a couple of schools of thought on that. This is not so much of a uh, a dog training question necessarily. This is more of a sort of a people skill type of question. One thing you could there's really two two ways to go about it. One way to go about it is. Don't even bother. You're not going to change the world. They're going to do what they're going to do. That's one way. I'm not saying it's the right way or the wrong way. I'm just saying that's one way to do it. Now, the other way would be to do what this lady did, which is she approached the person, talked to her, and at least the person was willing and was open to talking to her and they talked for about an hour. This is also a good way to, if you are offering training services, this is also a great way to pitch your service and let that person know that you are able to help them in whatever they are needing help with. In this case, this lady is trying to do some protection training kind of on her own, not realizing it that, this is probably not the best way for that puppy. Maybe she got the advice from somebody else. Maybe she thought that was the right idea. Maybe she read an article. Who knows? We don't know how it went, how the conversation went. But normally, unless I see something ridiculously just out of control, I'm not going to step in. That's just my my belief. You're going to do what you're going to do. Go ahead and do it. It's your dog. If I see you know, maybe something that is a little bit too too much to ignore where the dog is in pain, the dog is being treated very unfairly, which I haven't seen. I've never run into a situation like this. I haven't paid attention enough to, to seek out those those opportunities or those things, those situations. But maybe if I were to see something like that, like the like what this lady saw, Maybe I would approach and I would go, hey, yeah, do you need help with something? Is there something that I can help you with? I I train dogs for a living and and it seems like you might need some help. If they tell you, 
hey, fuck off, then you just move along. Okay, well, I just wanted to offer some help, and that's perfectly fine. No need to argue there, right? You can't you can't change people. Even if I even if you see somebody just maybe they're doing something that is not the most fair thing for their dog. They're not quite abusing it, but maybe they're just like in the case of this lady, maybe she's just inciting this dog to buy, but she's not abusing the dog. She's not smacking the dog really hard. But you see as a professional and this this doesn't look like it's gonna go well. If that's just it, you can offer your your help. But if the person is not open, as was in the case with this lady, or at least the kid, the lady was open to discuss what was happening. But if the person is not open, you can't you can't reach them. If you can't reach that person, you're not gonna get to the dog. Not not at all. So maybe also would be your approach too, right? So maybe rather than going. What the hell are you doing? Which I don't. I don't think this is the approach Mona took, because I know her. I don't. I don't think that's what she would do. But maybe instead of going in a hypothetical scenario similar to this, where instead of going, "What the hell are you doing? What's wrong with you?" Nobody likes that approach. You're just gonna make the person defensive. But if you go at it as, "Hey, is there something you need help with?" I actually provide the service, and I might be able to help you with whatever you're struggling with. If you go at it from a perspective of how can I help you, I think you'll be much more, the person will be much more open to to talk to you, to listen to you. Because even if your, your gut, your instinct automatically tells you I need to save this dog, and you go at it from that perspective of I need to save this dog, you're just gonna make the owner feel bad about themselves. Remember, they they might not be doing it because they're mean. They might not be doing it because they're a-holes. They might be doing it because that's what they think is the right thing. So you're not going to reach the, the dog. You're not going to be able to help the dog unless you empathize with the owner, unless you let the owner know, I am on your side. I want to help you with this. Because the second you try to get on the dog's side and, and save them, save that dog, the owner's just going to lock right up. You're going to encounter a lot of resistance, especially since you're offering unsolicited advice. People don't like that. So I can't say that I myself have noticed something that to that extent where I go, oh my God, I need to step in. Now I'll take that back. I'll take that back. I have. I have now. Now I remember one one instance, and I'll, I'll go over that here in a second. This is when I lived in Fisher, a different uh, different town over by Wimberley in Texas. And uh, when I lived there, there was a there was lots of open areas, not many houses. You couldn't see your neighbor. You could stand all the way at the top of your driveway. You could not see the next house. Really nice, nice big area, big open areas. And uh, I used to go for walks all the time with my dogs and just myself too and my my children when they were a little bit younger and my wife. And there was this house because you don't really have that many neighbors. You just have this road and, and just lots of land and just houses every once in a while so people have their dogs loose because they're in their property there aren't fences there there weren't fences there and i remember this one dog used to all like not always but pretty frequently this dog would be loose and it was not a friendly dog it would like come down and chase us (laughs) and i wouldn't run away i would just keep walking but it definitely that dog definitely got very close and when I had my dog, at least I had Jax, my, my very well-behaved dog. And I just had to keep going. Jax, Jax at least followed my, my cue to heal. But that dog got really close. And it, it was just such a pain to have to struggle with this. So now this was, this was now affecting me. It wasn't like I, I was an outsider seeing that this lady had an issue. Now her issue, her lack of control... And really, it was almost as as though she was like, well, I'm at my house, so I'm going to have my dog loose. Even though we walked 
around that neighborhood regularly, you could say her lack of regard for, for that, for other people, it became a hassle. Especially since, since she didn't have a fence. She had no control over a dog, nothing. This just happened frequently enough where I just, this wasn't me looking from the outside. This was affecting me. I was part of this problem. So this is slightly different because I was the recipient of her lack of responsibility. So I I wrote her a letter. <laughs> I wrote her a letter. And uh, it was a very polite letter. I didn't go to her house because, again, it's it's not like you just walk to the front door and knock on the door. You, I would have had to, like, go into her property, climb up the hill, just just not something you do when when uh when somebody has a pretty big big front yard that is part part of the property it's not like you're just in in an urban area with just a few steps and you're at the front door so i i sent her the letter rather than talking i didn't have her phone number or anything and in the letter i, I mean i was furious every time i was just so upset that this lady had no regard and she was very lackadaisical about it because her dog always came close but never made contact and if my dog was out of control if my dog responded to to this dog i would have had to deal with a dog fight but because Jax is very well trained i never had to deal with that so Jax would get all flustered too but he stayed on the heel if Jax had been green especially being the dog, the type of dog he is, I would have had to deal with the dog fight between Jax and this very large dog. So it would have been a mess. And that just upset me that she was too lackadaisical about it. So I sent her a letter. And in the letter, I was very polite. And I told her, I don't remember exactly what I wrote on there, but I know I told her the dangers of having her dog just lose with uh without control that it could instigate a fight that um that i I just kind of gave her worst case scenarios of what could happen but i i ended it with i want to help you out you know i train dogs and i would like to and I offer her this. I will. I would love to do a consultation for you. And my my point here, or my my aim here, was not to get a client. That was not what I wanted. It wasn't my goal. My goal was to really try to help this lady out. It upset me, but I I made it into I I need to have compassion for this lady and for this dog. So I wrote her the letter and I told her. You know, I was upset about it, but I told her. How about this? You know, let let me offer you a consultation. Let me ask you some questions about your dog, and I will come up with a plan to help you and your dog out. And I said, I'll do this at no charge. I'll even go to your house, um, and we will just do it that way. I want to make sure that you and your dog are taken care of. So I did that, and I helped the lady out. I didn't charge her anything. I, I gave her some tips. I helped her out. And she was actually a nice lady. She just was misinformed. So that would be about the only time where I I would, that I stepped in. But aside from that, I've never seen anything crazy. This one involved me. So um, I felt like I had to, to do something about it. But aside from that, I mean, do you guys see situations like this where you see crazy stuff that you feel like, oh man, I feel like I need to step in. If I don't step in, something bad's about to happen. Like in the case with Mona. If that's the case, uh, let me know. Let me know what you experienced. Let me know what you saw, what you did. I would love to hear what things you saw and how you approached it. Because I just don't see too many of those things. I, I just haven't at least not to my recollection, except for this one that I just told you about. But it was because it involved me. Maybe I just don't see that many. Um, I don't see people doing that. Or I just don't pay attention. I'm, or I'm just not there when it happens. But anyway, let me know. Mona, thank you very much for that question. I'd say take those two steps. Either leave it alone or 
use it as an opportunity to get clients. If this is something you guys do for a living, obviously it doesn't hurt to assist that person, at least give them your business card and let them know that you can help them. All right, till the next episode, thank you very much for tuning in and thank you for the question, Mona, and I'll talk to you guys later.